Hey, good morning, guys. Um, man, I seen the most horrifying video last night that I must share with you. Catholics, we need to be aware of what's going on. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hard to disturb. Uh, that's why, you know, my whole life I've been like a news junkie. I, I watch all kinds of news feeds, read all kinds of stuff. And I have a way of compartmentalizing things. It doesn't really disturb me. Uh, I can put them in their proper place. And, you know, my wife's the opposite. She can't even watch the news. I share stories where she's like, please, and I won't be able to get that out of my head all day. I'll be thinking about it. Uh, I mean, just yesterday, I just kind of give you a context. Just, uh, for example, yesterday I was telling my son a, a, a war story I had just read about. And I said, yeah, um, this war correspondent uh, was asked a question. Uh, someone asked him, uh, you know, would it be lawful if American soldiers uh, c came across the enemy sleeping to kill them in their sleep? And the guy, you know, the, the reporter who was answering, you know, spent years in Afghanistan, years in Iraq. So he said, yes, that would be lawful under the Geneva Convention, as long as they're combatants. You know, we can't kill civilians, but they're combatants, whether they're alive or awake, you know, it's free game, war is hell. And he says, in fact, I was even uh, told a story by a Swedish soldier who was attached to an uh, American Navy SEAL squad. And he said he's still traumatized from an experience he had. He said he was walking through a cave with these Navy SEALs and they came across some Taliban fighters who were sleeping. And, you know, they use sign language to talk, not to wake them. And uh, the leader of the squad said, you know, we're not going to shoot them because we'll wake them up, number one. Number two, we're in close quarters. A bullet could ricochet and kill one of us. So instead, they pulled out their knives. And the Swedish soldiers said they slaughtered them all before they even woke up. And uh, and my son said, oh, my God, Dad, that's so disturbing. And uh, But things like that don't bother me because the Taliban is evil. They needed to be slaughtered. I mean, they're killing and raping innocent women and children. I mean, they, they are a plague. They're the Nazis of our day, the Taliban. So to me, I could compartmentalize that, that that was a righteous kill. That was a just war we're fighting. And we're, we, we won the war on terrorism pretty much because of men like the Navy SEALs and the Army uh, Delta Force, Army Green Beret, Marine Raiders, the Tier 1 Air Force Special Operators. These are the guys fighting the battles. I mean, these are the guys in the trenches, so to speak, or in the caves. So, like, stuff like that don't bother me. But last night, I tuned in the Church Militant's evening news service. And it was just like a short two-minute clip. And Michael Voris warned people it was going to be graphic. He, and I was like, yeah. And he showed the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. So, in Washington, D.C., um, a woman had five frozen aborted babies that a whistleblower from a local clinic had given her and the picture of the baby was so horrifying it was I think the doctor said it was a 26 week aborted baby and her eyes you could look in her eyes were just like in fright you could tell she was in pain she was scared and you could see the brutality of the abortion but she was intact a fully intact aborted baby my first reaction was, I was sick to my stomach, was so disturbing. My second reaction was anger. I was just so angry that our country allows this. And I thought to myself, if God doesn't punish America for this brutality, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an, an apology. It, it was just so horrific, just so disturbing. And a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't look at stuff like that. I say, no, look at it. We need to see what God sees every day. And we need to share it with our friends who say, well, I'm opposed to abortion, but, you know, hey, it's, you know, it's, a, you know it's, it's your right if you want to do that. No, no, no. We need to show this. We need to share this video. And I say go to Church Militant because I guarantee you the Democrats that run YouTube are going to shut this video down all over. But somehow it seems like Michael Vore has figured out a way to... I don't know how they do it. They're really tech savvy over there. I mean, he's a legitimate media guy. He, you know, I had him on my show and I learned that he was a, uh, an anchor for CBS news for many years, won like four Emmy awards for reporting the news, was a producer at a Fox affiliate. 
So it's a legit news station over there at Church Milton. So I think they're gonna keep. They'll be. They'll be able to save this video, and the video needs to be shared. But you know, like I said, my first reaction was anger. First, angry at our country. Then anger at the church. Like, why do we allow pro-abortion politicians like Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi to take communion? And I just can't figure it out. And, you know, the only thing, you know, I always say, you know, I agree with Rick Warren and a lot of people like get furious me when I say this. You know, uh, the Protestant pastor Rick Warren said he met Pope Francis and said he's the best example of Jesus Christ on this earth. And I and I just have to remember that Jesus let Judas take the Eucharist. G Judas was at the Last Supper and ate the body of Christ. You know? And, uh, you know, he, he felt the guilt of what he did and hung himself. And some people, you know, try and say, well, maybe he repented and, and he's in heaven. But the Bible makes it clear it was better that Judas was never born. Judas, if, if Judas was spending the last 2,000 years in heaven, the Bible wouldn't say it, it's better that Judas was never born. No, Judas spent the last 2,000 years suffering and burning in hell. And that's the same place these politicians like Joe Biden are going to go unless they repent. And, you know, and St. Paul warns us, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, Many of you take the bread and the wine in an unworthy manner, not recognizing it's the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This is why... Many of you are sick and weak and are dying. You look at Joe Biden. I mean, you just look at that press conference he had the other day with Obama. That dude looks weak. And he looks sick. He's wandering around like he's fully dementia, fully, fully, full, full onset Alzheimer's. He's just wandering around. I see him looking at the wall like and going like this. Like he don't even know what's going on. And he's dying. He's dying in his sins. You know, so he will reap what he sow. The Bible said, don't be fooled. What a man sows also shall he reap um so it's so easy it's so easy to get angry but we're called to you know we have a hard call and jesus has some hard sayings for us he has some hard teachings and you know i'm not there yet and i'm praying to god that his grace will allow me to be more like jesus because you know if all these evil politicians never were born and it was just me, Jesus would still have to die on the cross for my sin in order for me to get to heaven. So I'm guilty. I'm a sinner, you know, and I'm pro-life and I love life because I know that Jesus loves life and he's pro-life. But that doesn't make me righteous. All I have is Christ's righteousness. The church early on in the earliest church council says, apart from the grace of God, we can do nothing. We're called to be like Jesus. As they were killing an innocent man, as they were crucifying Jesus Christ, he cried out, Father God, forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow, that is a hard, that is a hard example to follow when you look into the eyes of these aborted babies. And if you've had an abortion, we're not here to condemn you. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. Pope Francis said, abortion is the gravest mortal sin of our time. The church has condemned abortion from the very beginning. The, the earliest catechism, the Didache, written in 50 AD, condemns abortion as a mortal sin. A mortal sin means you commit it, you're going to hell. The church has taken this so serious. For centuries, you would have to go to a bishop to con get absolution. A a pre you couldn't even go to confession to a priest. And then a few years ago, Pope Francis, in the year of mercy, with his authority given to him in the chair of Peter, with his authority, he gave the priest authority to, to, to hear confessions and forgive us for this mortal sin of abortion. And, and I believe if I'm wrong, some, someone, you know, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments, but I believe we can still go to a priest. So if you commit an abortion or if you were a man who encouraged someone to have an abortion, run the confession, receive God's mercy, and then go and sin no more. 
And I've been there when I was 14 years old. I brought my 14 year old girlfriend to Planned Parenthood. And, you know, I talked her into getting the abortion because I was scared. And we reaped what we sowed. And our sins haunted us for years until God forgave us. And until we realize, until we realize how horrible that sin was, we couldn't receive his grace. But then once we realized what a wicked, evil sin that was, and we confessed our sins and we were forgiven, God's grace just abounded. We didn't deserve to ever have a child. We should have been cursed forever. If, if we wanted justice, we would have been cursed. And that woman would be barren. But instead, that woman became my wife. And by the grace of God, he gave us five children and ten grandchildren. That is the grace that Jesus wants to pour out on you. But you need to repent. You can't deny the abortion is not murder. You cannot deny that we are sinners in need of grace. So I beg you, if you've been complacent, even if you haven't had an abortion, if you voted for evil men that that support abortion and get money from these abortion industries. Repent, get to confession, and vote pro-life, and spend your money with pro-life companies. If you're buying or selling real estate, go to realestateforlife.org and get a pro-life realtor. Any other company, I don't know offhand, but I, I know that company is pro-life, and you're going to get a pro-life realtor. But any other business you do, any doctors you go to, find out, do you support abortion or are you pro-life we need to fight this fight and, and and it's a fight it's a spiritual battle it's not a fight against flesh it's a spiritual battle against spiritual principalities in high places pray the rosary get an adoration get to the sacraments get right with god time is short God bless and stay Catholic.